This example here says to develop a calculator application which allows the user to enter two values and choose to either add, subtract, multiply or divide the two numbers using one of four buttons. The result of the calculation should be displayed on an answer label. So we're going to switch over to NetBeans now and we're going to take a look at this example. OK, so here we are in NetBeans and I have created a new NetBeans project called Calculator and I've had it create an app class for me called Calculator App. Now I want to add my JFrame to this so that I can create my user interface and add some functionality to it. So we go to our package and we right click New JFrame Form. This JFrame we'll just call Calculator. OK. NetBeans will just take a moment to create this. Now in this calculator class, on my JFrame, I want to have the ability to enter in two numbers. So I'm going to need labels and text fields for those. And I also then need the ability to add, subtract, multiply and divide those and print an answer. So I'm going to need a label for my answer as well. And of course I'm going to need the buttons which will all make those different things happen. OK, so here NetBeans has opened my JFrame and I'm going to just make it a little bigger so that we can see what's going on. I'm going to add a label to the top and I'm going to say Calculator Application. Now, if I want the text in this to be bigger, I come down and I format that over here in my Properties. OK, and as well, what's best practice is to change the name of this label as well. So we want to change the variable name. Now, there's a couple of ways to access that. Right click on it, change variable name, or similarly, down here in my navigator panel, I can right click and change variable name. It's up to you. Sometimes it can be easier to see the components in the navigator panel on the bottom left hand corner. So I'm just going to call this title LBL because it's a title label. The next thing I'm going to need is another label that says enter number one. Again, I'm going to just make that a little bigger so that you can see it clearly. And then I need a third label. Enter number two and I'll just change the size of that one also. Okay, so those are my two labels. Again, I need to rename those so I'm going to call this one num1lbl for label and then rename this one num2lbl and I need the corresponding text fields to go with those so I'll grab my text field from my containers or my controls panel I want to oh apologies for that I'll explain what happened there in a moment so I want to edit the text in this text field so I want to take it out and then stretch out my text field Actually, it's only for one number, so we don't have to make it too big. And I'm going to change the variable name on this one to num1tf for text field. I'm going to grab another text field and put it directly underneath that. I'm going to edit the text to get the text out of there and stretch it out to match the other. And then, of course, change the variable name to num2tf. I need another label then for my result. So I'll put that one here. I'll stretch this out and let's say answer and change the font size to match the others. 
and it's particularly important that we rename this one. Right click, change variable name, answer LBL for a label. Again, these are not naming conventions or rules for what we're what I'm naming these labels, but they will be important um, later on, some more than others. What's important is that you can distinguish at a glance what's a text field, what's a label when you're looking at your variables. So that's why I go with LBL and TF. But again, it's completely up to yourself. So that's my answer label. And then let's have another one here. Right click, change variable name, and let's call this one result LBL and take the text out of that. Now careful it tends to disappear on you then. So we need to stretch it back out and this one's just going to be invisible. Okay now my others have shrunk. This is a neat trick NetBeans will do on you sometimes. Watch out for that. Okay and there's my result label, which is difficult to see, I have my answer, my enter number one and number two, and now I need my four buttons. So if I take a button now and drag it in, we'll call, oh, again, I've double clicked, and apologies, back to my design view. Right click and edit text, we'll call this one add. And again, name the variable, add btn. We'll take another button, edit text to subtract, and let's call that one sub btn. We'll add a third button, edit text, multiply. And let's call that one, oh, that didn't take, bear with me, multiply, and we'll name that one mul btn. And finally, my fourth button, edit text, divide, and we'll call this one div btn. So it's important to remember when setting these up, the difference between the text on the button and the name of the variable. And the name of the variables are going to be very important to you later on. I'm going to just drag my JFrame back up a little because I don't need as much space as I thought I would. So here I have my user interface all set up and now it's time to put some code in the background. Right, so this program, once I click on one of these buttons, should per perform a particular function. If I click on add when it runs, it should grab the text from both text fields and add it together and print it to the answer label, which remember is invisible here, the result label. So earlier you saw I double clicked add and it brought me into my code. Okay, now what that in fact did here was it created this method, private void add btn action performed. And then it's expecting a parameter of java.awt dot event dot action event event. So it's expecting an event to arrive in the in the brackets here and when it does it will do whatever falls between these two curly brackets. Okay so there's a little comment here to do add your handling code here and that is ex exactly what we're going to do. So when the add button is pressed it will do this. Now you'll have seen in the slides I talked about listeners and adding listeners and event handlers and all this sort of stuff, but really NetBeans has done all of that for us, okay? And if we go into our generated code here, if we expand this, you'll see that it's added an action listener to my add button, and then it's spoken here about this action performed um, method. Okay, so that's all handled for us. So we don't need to dwell on that a huge amount here in NetBeans. Okay, so we're off the hook on that one. So I'm back here in my add btn action performed method and I want to tell Java to grab the text from both text fields. If I'm going to do that, I'm going to need some variables. Okay, I'm going to want to um, use these variables 
here in the add method and probably in the multiply, subtract and divide method. So I can declare them up the top of my class as I typically would have previously. So let's do private int, we'll just deal with whole numbers for now, num1 and private int num2. Okay, I'm going to add them together and I'm going to get an answer. So private int result. Okay, so I have my three variables there. Again, the squiggly lines are just saying I haven't used them yet. So I should probably use them in some way. I come back to my add btn method. I say num1 is equal to, and I want to grab the text from the text field. This is why it was so important that I named it appropriately and that I have some sort of a method that I myself follow all of the time when I name my my buttons and my components in my user interface because otherwise I'm here thinking was it a num1 with a small tf or a capital T and a small f or a the other way around I know I always name mine num1 capital T capital F okay so I'm saying the variable num1 is equal to whatever is in num1 tf dot get text so I'm saying grab the text from the text field num1 tf and put it into num1 and straight away I get this squiggly line and my error is incompatible types required int meaning num1 is expecting an int and found string now we're familiar with this problem from when we used to use joption pane to get our inputs when we grab something from a text field java assumes it's a string so what do we need to do here we need to parse the string to turn it into an integer. So I'll just wrap this piece of code in some brackets. And before my brackets then I'm saying integer dot parse int num1 tf dot get text. Okay, and that's that grabbed from num1. Then we want to in num2 variable we want to take the parsed value of num two tf dot get text okay and that's now whatever numbers the user entered I have stored in my two variables from those then I want to add them together and I want to put the value in result so it's result equals num1 plus num2 okay and we should be able to test that now by simply hitting our, well, we could test it, but we may not see it yet because I've just stored the values in the result variable. Really what I need to do now is put that result on my result label. So let's try the code for that. My result label, we'll remember, was called result LBL, capital L. So result lbl dot set text so the last time we were getting the text this time we're setting the text and we're setting it to be result now when we did this with the get text method we saw that we got an error because j or the text fields expect strings and we wanted an integer and similarly here we're getting an error over the result method set text in class j label cannot be applied to given types required string found int we're giving it an int but it wants a string there are a couple of ways around it your instinct might be to stick in a little string here that says the answer is plus result and what happens there is when you append the variable to the end of the string, it automatically becomes part of the string. Not the absolute best practice. Sometimes it's suitable and that's fine. Okay. But another way to do it, if you cast your minds back, we have turned other things into strings. When we use string buffers, if you saw that video, we were able to turn the string buffer back into a string. We can use a similar method to turn an integer back into a string. So we say integer dot to string open around bracket and then close around bracket. Oh, it's completely 
changed my method there for me, sorry about that. So integer dot to string result. So take result, turn it back into a string, okay? Um, on the grounds that it is currently an integer. So now that we have this method complete, we're grabbing the text from the text fields, we're adding them up, which is what the purpose of the button was, and we're going to print them back out to the label. Let's play this and see how it looks. Ah, nothing's happening. Have we left anything out? Some of you at this point might be inclined to right click on the, Jav on the calculator Java class and go to run file, which will do the same job, but an important feature here, and you'll remember when we looked at the code in the slides, an important feature is to tell the JFrame it needs to be visible. So if our JFrame needs to be told to become visible to the user, the best place for us to do that is when the program runs. And we know when our program runs, Java runs the main method first. So if we go to our app class and we go to our main method, we're going to make an instance of our JFrame, our calculator JFrame, and we're going to make it visible. So an instance of any instantiable class is the same. Okay, calculator, my calc equals new calculator my calc dot set visible true okay now when I hit the play button Java runs my main method which tells it to make my JFrame visible so here I have my JFrame I have my fields and my buttons and if I enter two values two and six and hit add I get an error so let's take a look at that. Now I've gotten this error and it's saying it's having an issue with java.lang.integer.parseInt. Okay? And there's two there and it goes on to tell me at calculator.calculator.add button action performed calculator.java149. So let's go to calculator.java and line 149. So into my calculator class and line 149 is this one. And you may have noticed this, but I certainly didn't when I wrote the code. Occasionally, NetBeans will pop in the name of a method it thinks I'm looking for. So I ended up with get name instead of get text. So apologies for that. Lesson learned, something to watch out for. So let's try play that again. Here I have my JFrame again. I'll enter my two and my six and hopefully it'll be more successful this time add and there's my eight again I probably should have changed the font size in that label a little but two plus six gives me eight you'll see if I hit subtract or divide or multiply nothing happens so now it's time to go back and put the code in for those and that should be relatively straightforward now that we've figured out the tricky bits back into my design view so when we want to switch between our JFrame and our source this is where we're going design and I want to do the subtract method. Now last time we wanted to get the action perform method for the add button we double clicked. Let's just do it a slightly different way this time. We right click on the subtract button and we go to events, action and action performed. And you'll see there's lots of other events here and some of you may in any projects that you're working on want to use key events or mouse events. It depends on yourself. So I'm just showing you here all of the events are available here. But we're going for an action event and an action performed method. And when we scroll down, there we go, subtract button, action performed. So we know again, num1 equals integer.parse int num1tf dot. Watch out for it this time, make sure I get the right method name, get text num2 equals integer.parse int num2tf.getText and then we want to do result equals and this time we're subtracting so we'll just do num1 minus num2 
and then let's turn that back into a result and pop it on the result label result lbl dot set text and in here integer dot to string and in my brackets result okay Again, you'll see Neppings has done it again. It put in two binary strings. So just watch out for those things. They can cause you no end of trouble. So just watch out that it's being um, populated the right way. So I've got my subtract button do done. If I hit play, I can put in my five and a two and hit subtract and I get three. But if I hit add, I get 7. Now I'm not going to go ahead and populate the multiply and divide buttons here. You can see the pattern forming. If we want to grab text from a text field, this is how we do it. We have to watch out for whether we want it to be an int or a double or a string. And then to set the text to a label, here's how we do it. And our calculations go in the middle. Events handled by buttons aren't limited to simple calculations. Obviously, it depends on what it is you want your programs to do. In a bigger application, you might want a button to bring you from one particular screen or one JFrame to another. And we've seen the code in this application for making a JFrame visible. So it's just about thinking, how do we make the old one invisible? Also, you might find that rather than put your calculations in here, you might have an instantiable class and you might read in your values from the user. You might store them in variables, num1 and num2, create an instance of an instantiable class that does the calculations and run a subtract method and then get the value back and print it to the user. So that's something to think about using our instantiable classes that we might have seen in previous videos where we perform some sort of a calculation and using this class simply for the JFrame piece. Sometimes it makes sense, sometimes it's just more work than is necessary for the task at hand. It depends on the calculations you're doing. But it's important for you to be aware that these methods can do much more than this. They can take us from this frame to another, they can grab text from the user and do something with it. We can have loops, we can have if statements, we can have all sorts going on in these methods. They're just another method. So don't limit yourself to anything as straightforward as this. And remember, if you're pressing play and you're, you're not seeing your JFrame, check that you've told the main method to make your JFrame visible. If you haven't, then you're not going to see it. That's event handling in a nutshell. And then from there, it's just building and improving on what events are actually happening when the buttons are pressed or the keys are hit on the keyboard. So best to look at that and I hope it all goes well.